that's me again. Same guy from before lunch. Uh, I'm Brian, also known as Briantus. Uh, so I'm here with, uh, with Felix, and we're going to talk about building documentation. Um, so first on, on my screen here, we just have the, the Ansible doc site uh, that you've probably uh, seen before. Um, and we're going to be talking about building our building a doc site for our own collections separately from from doc site. Um, so why maybe why would why would we want to do this? Um, for one thing, editing editing docs, adding something to your doc site, you want to be able to see what that's going to look like. Uh, it takes a little while for docs to get to the public doc site. You have to actually release your collection. Then it will get to the devil doc site um, kind of soon. Assuming your collection is actually included in Ansible, because otherwise it's not there either. Yes, uh, yeah, great point. I skipped right over. If you're not included in the Ansible package, the community package, you won't be on the doc site at all. So that's another uh, good reason. Uh, but yeah, it also helps for writing RST, figuring out typos and references and other things, giving you a, a faster feedback loop. Uh, so we're going to talk about uh, some tools to do that. So I will hand it over to Felix. Thank you very much. Other way around. I think, yeah. <laughs> Works better this way. Okay. No, it's, it's, it's okay. <laughs> it's just me who has to suffer. I hope it's not you. <laughs> okay, so to show you all this, we created a small test collection, which doesn't really do anything, but it has a, like a role, a module, and lookup plugin in there with some co documentation copied over from other collections so that there's some interesting arguments back and some text to show. So you can see something. Um, Actually, the collection repository is here on GitHub. We'll be doing everything live. Um, we're hoping that neither GitHub will go down or the internet connection, otherwise we're a bit screwed. Um, but yeah, we'll try to do our best. Um, also, in between, if you have any kind of questions, please feel free to ask and interrupt us. This is likely going to take less time than we planned. Um, but if you ask no questions, if you do ask questions, we'll definitely take a bit longer, but that's good. Okay, so um, I want to show you first a couple of preparation steps. I don't know how many of you actually um, tried to contribute to a collection or to even maintain a collection. Um, yeah, some of you did. The fun is usually first getting to, um, I mean, you can check out the repository with, from GitHub, but then if you want to actually try to use that one with Ansible or like even run Ansible tests in it, you might have seen that it's a bit more complicated than just checking it out. Um, for these things, um, what I did is, or what Brian actually did, is just check the collection out and um, the home folder code, and then my namespace, my collection. That's the name of the collection repository. Um, the first trick is getting Ansible to actually know about this collection. Because now if I do Ansible Galaxy collection list, this one won't show up. Okay. Whoops. Because really, I mean, it looks like Brian has a lot of collections installed. <laughs> but it's definitely not one of the collections listed here. Um, there are multiple ways to do this. One simple way is to simply create a swim link um, to this collection. I uh, know, I'm always confusing. Um, basically, I have to put the path to this collection in, inside the home directory. Um, Ansible collections, Ansible collections, and then my namespace, and in there, my collection. But I think I forgot to actually create that directory. So, sorry for the sound. 
Um, Now it should be quiet, hopefully. <laughs> now if I do Ansible uh, collection to list them all, then hopefully it Last will one. show... At the bottom. Ah, it's actually at the bottom. Yeah. Nice. <laughs> I don't even have to scroll, which is a bit harder than on my Linux machine. This is actually a Windows machine with uh, WSL, so <laughs> it's, uh, it's the first time in my life I use one, so... <laughs> <laughs> I hope I don't do anything too stupid with it. Now the nice thing is that once it's here, I can also use Ansible log, for example, to look at the to use its list command to look at everything what's in in this collection. Now I can list the modules. You can see there's this test module, the module that does nothing. Um, there's also. Uh, I also added a lookup plugin, which is also a lookup plugin, which does nothing. And there's, I think, also a role. Yes, there's also the test role that also does nothing. But they all have some argument specs, so there's something interesting to see. Um, I mean, this way I can also just use the thing. Um, Okay, actually, I put in some argument which is required. Um, yeah, but you can see Ansible can find the collection, so we can actually do things with it. Oh. Okay, so, I mean, for the Ansible um, um, CLI tool, the callback white list is ignored anyway, if you don't have something special set. But this will be more interesting for the Ansible playbook output. Okay, now, how do we get documentation for this collection built? So we can see a nice HTML page similar to the doc site here. I mean, here if you, oh, sorry, it's here. If I, for example, go to, let's pick a random collection, let's say, this one, it's a bit dead, but it exists. Uh, there you have a nice page which has some basic info, like it's a version 1.2.0 of the collection, what it requires, who the authors are, then you see the plugin index. Um, for example, you see the modules. For module, you can see um, the parameters which are supported, you see examples and so on. And I want to see something similar for my collection. And for that, um, um, I can install a tool called Ansible Docs. Um, there's already a VM up, set up, right, and activated. Yes. Good. Because otherwise, um, that would be the best thing to first set up a VM so you don't pollute um, your global namespace. So now I can do pip install Ansible Docs. It's already there. Surprise. And then I can use that one um, to create a things doc site template for me. I made make a subdirectory, build docs. And it has a lot of, or several parameters. There, you can configure a lot of things, but the most or interesting or important options are, are basically you have to tell it which collections to use if you don't specify anything which you which will use everything it can find and since we had a lot of collections installed here that will be a huge hot oxide so we better let's not do that yet and another option which is very useful is use current this will basically um make sure that it will just use or assume that the collection you for the doc site you want to build is installed somehow and Ansible can just find it. If you don't use it, you have to, um, actually, um, then it will, I think, try to download the collection from Galaxy and install it in a temp directory and build docs from there, which is also can be useful, but not for what we want to do here. So I'm telling it to do use current. 
And now in this subdirectory, build docs, it creates some files for us. Um, well, there's the git ignore. There's a Ansible docs configuration file. There's a build script. Um, there's a things configuration, a requirements file, and um, an RST directory, which contains an index RST file. Um, the first step actually it tells us what to do. In the output here, it tells us we should install the requirements in a VM if possible, and then call the build script. The requirements are probably already mostly there. Ah, yeah, that might be easier. We can use <laughs> an editor to look at these things. Um, I mean, the requirements here are basically Ansible docs itself which we already have. Then there's Ansible Pigments. This is um, some um, plugin for pigments to allow um, rendering Ansible out playbook output. Syntax highlighting, right? Basically syntax highlighting for that. It assumes that you use the default JSON output. Um, there's no support for the YAML callback yet, but in, well, it's, it's basically used in the main documentation as well. And then there's, of course, it requires Sphinx, and the Sphinx Ansible theme. You can also tell, um, I mean, by default, um, Ansible docs Sphinx in it uh, uses the Sphinx Ansible theme, but you can also tell it to use another theme, then it will replace this line by another one, and also in the Sphinx config, will tell it to use another theme. But this one is a theme which is also used on the official doc side, which works and looks similar enough, so if you don't have or if you don't really care for now, then just use it and it should be fine. But you could should also be possible to use any other theme. Okay, to install these, I'll use pip install r requirements. And actually, surprise, everything is already there. That's nice. Then the next thing is I can use the build script. This one looks a bit more complicated. What it does is it creates a temp directory, this temp RST. Um, well, it first cleans it up, creates a, a new one, and then it uses Ansible docs to create the RST files which we need for the collection. And then it uses rsync to copy these files over into the RST directory we have. Um, if you're wondering why we're doing these two steps, it's basically to make sure that we have exactly only the RST files which correspond to the current state of the collection. Um, Ansible Docs itself is clever enough to only override RST files which have changed, but it won't, it's not clever enough to delete files it doesn't write. So if you, want, if you don't want some leftovers from earlier builds in there, then it's easiest to do it this way. And doing it with rsync instead of simply deleting the directory, recreating it, makes sure that um, things itself has some kind of um, incremental build um, functionality. So if you rebuild the whole thing, it will be quicker than on the first run because it doesn't have to rebuild everything, only the changed files. <coughs> Sorry. I think. Um, I mean, that's all, that also has been part of the original doc site build in Ansible. I think Doug was the one who added it, if I remember correctly, a long, long time ago. And I really like that, so that's one reason why we're also doing it here. Okay, um, basically, you can also do all these steps manually or in another order. This is just giving you an easy to use build script, which should just work um, and produce some doc site for you. So I just run it and drink a bit of water. Oh, actually, yes, that's actually, <laughs> I did a mistake here. When creating these um, documentation, I didn't tell it which collection to use. So it builds the doc site for everything. And as you have seen, there's a long list of collections, so let's not do that. Let's just build one for this one. So if I now look in the, it updated the build script. It now is 
passes the name of the collection on to um, Ansible Docs, so it will only create documentation for that collection. So now if I run it again, it will hopefully be a lot quicker. Yes, I mean the, the first part it was pretty quick, rsync also was pretty quick and building the rst also was pretty quick. So let's see how the result looks like. Since it's um, WSL it was a bit more tricky to actually find the files, so we did that beforehand. Otherwise I would be struggling to find them. So now we have um, in this build docs directory, there's a build subdirectory and there's the file in there. Actually let me make it a bit bigger. And now I have, well, documentation for my Ansible collection or collections or whatever. Um, this is basically the index rst file which has been pre-generated which I can edit if I want. Um, I can look, go to the collection index which, surprise, has my collection and nothing else. And if I go in there I can see it's version 010. Um, well, we have two authors for this great thing. It requires Ansible Core 211.0 plus. Well, we even have some information about if you want to communicate with us, where you can find us. And then there's a, there are indexes. There's a test module, the test lookup plugin, and the test role. And now if I look at it, um, I can see all the information there is. I mean, the, <laughs> there's a description which says the model really doesn't do anything. I promise. <laughs> then there's information on the... Um, no, it's not a theme issue, it's actually um, it's a responsive issue because I zoomed in too far. If I zoom out a bit, then I get back the classical table. That's also something which has been there for one, two years now. But it's a bit more responsive than the old page. Um, if you have a really, well, small or narrow device, or if you zoom in far enough, then you can see that it actually looks a bit better. It uses less horizontal space. But let's zoom out a bit so we get back the classical table. You can see all this structure um, basically as on the um, Ansible Docs slide itself. It even has attributes, which is also a rather new feature. I think it has been there in core since 2.12. Um, it allows you to put more information to the documentation for modules, like what properties do they fulfill. Like in this case, the module has full support for check mode and partial support for div mode and it's the module supports POSIX platform. And there are some more attributes, most of them are not really that interesting for regular models but more for modules which have action plugins. I mean in the Ansible core documentation you can see a lot more. There are also examples, return values, basically what you would expect from a random doc site. And it was basically very easy. You basically have to tell Ansible Docs to create a thing, pay, things page template for you. Then you can run the build script and ta-da, you have the docs. Okay, and that was the first step, I think. Uh, the next step is that um, we want to kind of automate this a bit so you can um, integrate it into GitHub. Do you want to do any, uh, see if there's any questions? That's a good question. Does anyone have a question so far? Good. Yeah, the next part Brian will present because he wrote these workflows or shared workflows which you can use for that. And yeah, you'll see they're really cool. Okay, this is working. All right, so, um, yes, so this, this work is, all right, so let me go back a step, where, where this started. Um, I was trying to write documentation for my collection. Um, I suck at RST, I don't know it very well, um, and I was trying to figure out how do I get feedback on, on this, how do I know what's, what, what's going on. Um, 
So originally some folks in the Docs community helped me out. They're like, hey, here's the, here's the build on the main Ansible repo. Um, you could copy your files there, you could run the build script that's there, and it'll build everything, but yours will be in there in a weird place. But it worked, and I was able to see the output, the actual render RST output like you're seeing here. Um, it just takes like forever. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but, but it's still much quicker than waiting for it to get published. So, yeah, so, um, but basically I was like, well, wouldn't it be great if we had a way to have like fast iteration on this? Um, but this Sphinx in it command did not exist then. Um, so it was actually like, I was looking for this. Um, and of course, Felix, being the guy that he is, just went and created it, um, <laughs> made this amazing thing. So, um, so yeah, so then I was looking like, oh, how do I automate this on a collection? Um, my collection uses GitHub Actions, so I'm like, let me let me build something in the CI, try to try to build these docs uh, at at PR time, really get that that fast feedback loop. Um, so, right. So long story short, I did that. I built this stuff over time, and uh, that gave us um, there's a there's a repo here with a set of uh, both actions and shared workflows. And um, one quick note, maybe yeah. we will publish a list of our script and also all the links to all these things after the talk. Yeah. So you don't have to try to figure out the URLs from the yeah. way too small screen. Right. Um, okay. So, um, so these things are, are open and available for anyone to use, just like other other actions and workflows. Um, there's some. Uh, documentation on the wiki here and that kind of goes over um, some of these actions and the, the workflows. Um, the easiest way to use these is, is shared GitHub workflows because when you create it in your, in your own repository there's very little for you to do. Um, there's just some parameters. Um, so let's see, do we have anything? I don't have here yet. Um, should we start with no publish? Or just like for the PRs, maybe? Or whatever you prefer? Um, if you've got a PR, could then just show from the user's point yeah. of view, might be good. Yeah, that's a good idea. Okay. Um, create a PR when you put the web browser there. Alright. Maybe I'll just create that from. Uh, okay. All right. We'll we'll do that one first. And So let's show what this uh, looks like. Okay, uh, we're gonna do this as a PR and then show you like, this is it. So this, this workflow here is mostly boilerplate. Um, this is referencing the docs build repo for where to get the workflow. Um, there's a couple of uh, parameters being passed in here. And what this actually looks like, if you want to see what you had to do was here in samples, uh, PR build with comment, you can actually see this is really mostly the sample that's already there for you to copy. Um, so most of this was not something you had to like come up with on your own. Um, so that one is mostly copying it over and doing a search and replace for the collection name. Yeah. So, uh, okay, let's uh, arrange that. Um, right. 
Right, so then we need to change something and put up a PR so you can see uh, what happens here. So we'll just go into the into here. So we didn't, we, you know, we made one little small change. Uh, we probably should have disabled the other one, of course. <laughs> um, okay. We can fix that. Uh, the box one is already running, so it shouldn't take that long. Yes. But uh, you kind of see it going along. Um, uh, yes, I should talk about what this actually is doing. Uh, <laughs> the build here is is doing two things. So it's checking out the base, uh, like the target of the of your PR. Um, it's building the doc site for that, and then it checks out the the head or the merge commit of your PR and builds that doc site. Um, the reason it builds both is so that it can compare them and see if there's any differences between them. Um, that way, if there's no differences, it doesn't really do anything. Um, it doesn't affect your PR. But if there are differences, like there are here, it will post a comment uh, on the PR, um, thanking you for the contribution. Uh, it will show you which files changed, and um, it will give you a little diff of, the, uh, of what changed in there. Uh, so this gives you some feedback right away of like what's going on here. Um, it will also give you a link directly to the run because the, um, the whole build is here as an artifact. So you could click this, you could download it to be a zip file and it'll have the whole build just like the output from the build a stage script earlier. Um, and so you can get your, your feedback, um, pretty quickly. Now, that's nice and all, but yeah. Sorry, um, I might miss the book. Do we have somewhere where you can click and view the generated page live without having to download the. Uh, We're getting there. Yeah. That's fine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, yes. So that's that's the next thing. So that was nice, but like it would really be nice if it published the docs somewhere where you could see them and and actually view them like you're browsing the site. Um, so that is also possible uh, with this. We have like. We have two shared workflows for publishing, uh, one for GitHub pages and one for uh, a service called surge.sh, um, which is actually what I used first. Um, you can also publish to any other place that you want. So um, this entire set of uh, workflows and actions are pretty modular. So there's like a, there's an easy path with like the defaults, but you can um, you can go ahead and, and pick out whichever pieces you want and do something different with it. So if you wanted to publish to um, an FTP site or your own hosting somewhere, that is um, 
that is possible. So there is a, another shared workflow example um, that does pretty much the same thing. Uh, the difference is it has this extra uh, workflow for publishing um, the pages. two commits in there, the one commit we already merged, so now it's only the difference. Right. Okay. Um, what we did before. We need to fix this. <laughs> oh. well, I realize this is not gonna work. Um, okay. So what this is there's a there's a conditional here on the publishing step which checks if the current repository is your repository. Uh, the purpose for this is so that if people fork your repository, it's not trying and failing to publish pages on, on the fork repo. Uh, so we actually have to, we do have to put the, the collection in here. Um, Do you want to make a change this time? Sorry. Do you want to uh, put up a docs change? Or? Um, yes, I'll do that next, but just kill some of these. I'll, I'll kill it, yeah. It will take forever. Adds, adds, extends the description a bit and adds a more documentation to some of the sub options. So let's see, it will take some time to build it, but since it's not really doing anything else, it should go pretty quickly. All right, so we have the builds going here. summary kind of shows, you know, does a build, does a publish, does PR comments. Actually, enable we'll GitHub pages um, <laughs> if we want to publish to them. What does the publish step? Does it automatically? It does not. Uh, I think you have the permissions to edit. Oh, um, Actually, it did something. Did it? Well, that would be nice. Okay. 
There we go. We have the deployment running. This workflow is just something that gets put there automatically by GitHub Pages. So this is the published site here on um, on the GitHub Pages URL, and we can see that it actually is scoped to this PR. So this isn't just for one one thing. It's not multiple PRs writing over each other. You've got a, a PR um, kind of directory there, and so you can just keep doing this. Multiple PRs have all of the the changes up. Um, and in the, in the comment here, in the file changes, these are actually links as well. So every file that, that is changed in your PR, um, you have a direct link to the file that changed. So you can kind of just get right, right to that. That's really cool. Yeah. You can see, yeah, uh, scroll down a bit again. So you can see this extra sentence which I just added. Right. Yeah, so this is really helpful for figuring out formatting and um, also just proofreading, even uh, being able to see it the way that it that it's meant to be rendered. Um, I don't know if we'll show it, but there's a there's a same workflow for push, and on that way on push you can have like the the version of your docs on main, for example, or all of your stable branches. Um, it should already be pushed to main. Oh, okay. So let's see if we merge that. I have a question on the chat. Mm -hmm. uh, do the PR docs get cleaned up? Clean up? Ooh, really good question. Uh, yes, yeah, so the question on the chat was whether the, the PR docs uh, get cleaned up. Um, and the answer is yes. So uh, let's go back to the actions here. Uh, collection docs closed. That's this one here. So this does get triggered on close. It will go through the build process uh, again. It does this so that it, it knows um, whether it has to do anything. Um, but yeah, as that goes along, it will um, it will remove those those files and update the comments. Yes. Yes. Um, let's just see if this works. Okay, yeah, so this is now the main branch with the. The text isn't updated yet because that one is still building. Yes. But, um, Whenever it will be done. Yeah. Uh, it also works for tags. So if you push a tag for your releases, um, it, you could also browse like slash tag, and then the tag if you wanted to build a link to very specific, uh, complete versions of the docs. comment has been updated um, that the PR has been merged and the docs are incorporated, linking to the, you know, the main version of those docs. Um, if the PR is closed instead of merged, it's like a slightly different message. Also, if the PR is updated to no longer have any differences from main, the, the comment will be deleted. Main should be updated now, and yeah. And let's see if I was actually right about it deleting. Okay, good. <laughs> yeah, so 
So the, the PR version is gone now because the PR is closed. So. Um, yeah, so I think that's it. No, no, no. I have some more stuff. <laughs> Are you ready? This is, sorry, this is uh, basically some stuff which I, I think talked about at the last or the second to last Contributor Summit. Um, mainly extra docs for doc sites and um, also the um, links which I, which you already quickly saw before. Um, we go back to the build doc site for the collection. You can see that we have here some general links to like a matrix room, IRC channel, mailing list. And also on the, for the module itself, um, you will see that we have an edit on GitHub link, which if we do it correctly, it will actually send us to the GitHub page where we can edit the module file directly for this um, part of the site we have been looking at. So we were looking at this test plugin, uh, sorry, the test module. And as you can see, if I edit it, I'll get um, an editor for the collection for plugins modules test, which allows basically any random person looking at the docs to simply be able to click on it and with the least amount of work be able to create a PR to modify something like fix a title or expand some wording or correct some wording or whatever you have. Okay, so the qu one question is how does this actually work? I think this one is, uh, yeah. So in the collection we have this docs directory, docs, and then in their docs site, and then there's a links YAML file with what some, it doesn't seem to like something with this, oh, okay. Whatever this exclamation mark is, let's ignore it. Um, this file comes with a lot of comments. Um, that's because it has, I mean, the whole repository is templated by the standard collection template, which exists, I think, in the, was it Ansible collections uh, repository, which you can use as a template for new collections. It contains some things already in there, like, for example, this file. Um, it allows you to do some configuration so that the doc site build can add certain things, like for example the edit on GitHub button. Like here we basically tell it where is the repository located on GitHub. We tell it the main branch where edits should go. And also in case um, the collection actually lives in the subdirectory of the repository, there's also this path prefix, which is in this case empty. But uh, there are a lot of collections, or maybe not a lot, but there are several ones which are in subdirectories. And if you happen to have one, then this one is important for you. But also further below, you have some, you can add some extra links. Like for example, I wanted to have a link to report an issue so that random people looking at the doc site can quickly find the link where they can create an issue for a module or the, a plugin or for something else. And there's also some information about communication. Like here, I basically put the standard Ansible communication platforms in. There's a matrix room, the users room. There's an IFC channel, the Ansible channel, and there's a project, Ansible project mailing list. But of course, if you have like a specialized collection for, let's say, networking, you could <laughs> send users to the networking room instead and send them to the networking, ends of the networking channel and maybe to some other mailing list, I don't know, or to whatever specific means of communications you're using. I guess we have to add support for Discord eventually, but <laughs> discourse, yeah. once we, uh, this discourse, sorry, I'm always confusing, once we figure out whether we actually want to use it or whatever other thing we might use or not. It's generic. Yes. Now it's, it's still generic, that's good. Okay, so um, that's the one file um, which you can have and then there are these extra docs. You might have seen on some collections that they include scenario guides. For example, let's go to the official doc site, docsansible.com, like for example for the Hashivolt collection. Yes, it has 
so a lot of guides actually. Um, these are basically RST files included in the collection and they can contain some arbitrary text related to the collection. In this case they explain the filters included in the collection, how to use them, probably also in which use cases. I mean I'm not really familiar with the documentation, Brian is more, but yeah, you, you can I guess easily think of several such documents you could write for your, doc for your collection which explains certain aspects and um, yeah, for example, a contributor guide, which helps people to contribute to, co uh, to your collection, which will be really useful if you want contributions, that is. Okay, so there are, um, actually for our test collection, I also prepared a branch. Um, let me find it. Wait, that's the wrong one. I prepared a branch where I add such a document. Um, this UI is always confusing me. How do I have to go? Yeah, that's it's a lot easier if you just push something, then it makes it that easy for you. But in this case, you, I basically added an extra docs file, which contains basically what, what to put into the main index, namely a section called scenario guide with one entry, namely guide, and that guide is an RST file in, in docs, docs site RST, and basically has some information. Um, well, in this case it's not really useful because the collection doesn't do anything, but in case of a useful collection you would write some more stuff there. And one thing you might notice is that it has a label which is pretty long. Um, we had one problem when we were allowing arbitrary content for collections in the doc site, namely if you look at the Ansible doc site, you want to prevent that there are 20 collections which add a new label named scenario guide, because <laughs> you can only have one label scenario guide in, the, in a huge doc site, otherwise you've got a problem if you want a reference to it, to which collections would the user be sent. So basically to avoid this problem, we decided to force every collection to use a prefix for all the labels and RST files which they add, which in this case is Ansible Collections, dot, then the namespace of the collection, dot, then the name of the collection, and then another section, dot, doc site, to prevent it from colliding with the automatically generated ones for plugins and roles and um, modules. And then you can put whatever text you want. And of course, it's pretty simple to do mistakes. Like for example, you could forget about this, just add a label. You can also, here in the links file, um, which we had, which I showed you earlier, it's actually here, you could maybe do some typo or something and then suddenly you have a problem, or well, the problem will be that Ansible docs will basically ignore these parts to prevent the whole build to fail. But you well, then you notice this problem by basically parts of the doc site which got built that they are missing. And that's not really helpful because, well, you might only notice it after release. So what we wanted to add is like a linting tool which allows you to quickly detect such problems early on. Before I continue, let me just get this thing merged so that we have some extra documentation. Actually now we can wait again for the build, then we can even take a look at how it looks like. And while this thing is building, um, I want to show you how to, um, or how this um, tool actually works. Let me check out main with the latest version. I guess the main part was pull, uh, pulling was actually the other branch for the um, for the GitHub pages because that one of course now has a huge um, or certain amount of HTML files for the build doc site, so it has to pull some data. Good. Um, Ansible Docs has multiple subcommands. We used things in it before, but there's another interesting. I mean, the the ones before that they are basically used by well Devil and Stable. They are used by the doc site build for the Ansible package, 
uh, current and connection, they are used depending on how you configure it um, for building the REST files for the things doc site. Plugin is a special one which you can use to generate documentation for one specific plugin. I don't know if anyone actually ever used it. Um, and then, oh, we got some comments and reviews. Yay, nice. <laughs> Why not wait for actually the CI to run through? So we, uh, also the docs one? No. Okay, the docs one should come. Um, Okay, and then there was a, the last one, which is interesting, namely that's lint collection docs. And that allows you to, to do a basic lint on this extra documentation, both the links file and the extra documentation file, which it will tell you problems, like you, you screwed up the labels, or maybe you did a typo somewhere. But before I look at that, let me quickly look at this one. We got a comment by the docs build. And some of the files changed. Uh, actually, most of the files will change because some new top-level um, link has to be had, had been inserted in the um, sidebar, so every page changes because of that. You can, for example, see here that there's now a scenario guide entry somewhere, and so on. But, I mean, this HTML diff is not really that great because, well, do you enjoy reading <laughs> diffs of HTML files which were automatically generated by some theme which don't really look nice? So it's a lot nicer if you just look at the build. Um, also, that, that diff will be truncated. There's a limit in GitHub comments, so if it's too big, it won't even be complete. So. Yes, so the git diff is limited there. and Well, now if you look here, you can see that there's a new section called Scenario Guide. And if I click on it, I can see, hey, I have a Scenario Guide for our awesome collection. Um, it links back to the collection. It has a table of um, contents. Oh, and I can also see I did some mistakes, <laughs> which is kind of nice that I can see it now. It's a really good demonstration. Yes. It's kind of the point of, of the exactly. I think I screwed that up. <laughs> And I just created that REST file a bit earlier today, and apparently I wasn't watching good enough. Mm, it doesn't look that. There's a missing underscore after the... Yeah, between collection collection. Uh, yeah. No, but there's a missing underscore after the, the yeah. accent. Yeah, I think there's yeah, but there's a ref. It's oh. not a regular link, so... Ah, but here, there's a missing colon. Classic RST mistake. Yes. Good demonstration of the CI actually yeah. checking stuff out. Yeah. The nice thing about GitHub are the suggestions. I really like them when reviewing stuff. Yeah. And I especially like this where you suggest something and then you merge it. <laughs> you just accept it. I can even call my own Jaco stupid. Which did I forget right. something? Oh. Ah. Yeah. You should give a little time for questions though. Yes. Good, um, but while this is running, let me quickly show you this subcommand. So I can use Ansible docs, um, lint collection docs. And I can simply provide it to a path of the collection, in this case the current directory. It will run and in this case it says no error because it didn't output anything. Um, actually, let me quickly introduce an error so we can see that something is... For example, assume that we have some IRC handles instead of channels. Then if I run it again, it will tell me, um, hey, in links YAML, there is a communication, IRC handles, extra fields are not permitted. So I know I screwed something up. In this case, I can see, hmm, yeah, I think it was a typo, so let's fix it. Um, I cannot modify the extra docs yet because I haven't merged it. But if, if I, for example, would have an extra doc where the, lab the label prefix is wrong, it would tell me, hey, there's a label here which doesn't conform which doesn't have the correct prefix, it's wrong. So this one, this lint, linting step is really helpful to find such issues before you actually merge it and publish it. Let me quickly go back. Does this one... 
it's still running or is it already done again? Yeah, it's still running, so we can see in one, two minutes how it looks like. Since we are almost out of time, <laughs> any questions so far or any new questions? Not a question, but this is really cool. I've not seen a lot of this before, so yep. thank you. And really thanks a lot to Brian for actually turning it through a workflow. I added it to a couple of collections. It was really easy to add, and it works really great. It is all built on Felix's work. <laughs> well, <laughs> yeah, Toshio also did a lot of that work. The power of community. And yeah. earlier people working on all this build, including Doug, who unfortunately had to left, uh, to leave. So, cool. Let's see if this one collection box uh, hopefully yeah. Yeah. Done. I like how uh Lacanvo said this is really cool and I yeah. learned a lot from seeing this. Um, it kind of put some things in context that I didn't really understand too. before. But I wonder um, Is so RST this is looking for, better? I'm sorry. Is RST looking better as an option now for your I thought, uh, yeah, that, it looked fine as well. I'm kind of really prone to love RST. Um, it's, it's, it's great. But I, I wonder, so this is, you know, you would use this for collections that aren't in the Ansible package. I guess if there's... Oh, the, any, but right now most of the collections using it are, are in the package. Oh, okay. Yeah. I didn't know, I guess my question was around, like, if there was anything in here that would... Um, Maybe, I guess, but for, I'm sorry, I'm like super tired, like maybe cause a problem or like we go to include it in the package. Is there, cause a problem isn't the right thing to say, but is there anything that's... Like any conflicts or... Yeah, something like that or any difference with like how the package collection docs are built. Oh, okay. Uh, no, it's actually exactly the same as collect, yeah. package collection docs are built. But so also, this, does, this isn't what will end up on the doc site. That build will happen separately. So this is sort of a preview yeah. um, or, or something you can publish for the collection itself. Uh, for example, main branch. Uh, yeah, that way you can have like main branch docs and, and things like that yeah. you know, at a faster cadence. Um, but yeah, there, there shouldn't be, there should be no conflict. Yeah, uh, does, I don't know if anyone here knows GitLab, and I don't know if the folks are here. The question is, do you think you could get something similar on GitLab? I'm not saying you make it. Oh, I see. Yeah. Okay, yeah, so the question is, can we get something similar in GitLab, as in like GitLab CI? Probably, yeah. Um, so, sure. Right. As I said, I built this entirely on, on Felix's command line stuff. Um, someone can definitely write that for GitLab. Uh, I'm redoing it in Jenkins for my job. Um, I don't recommend that, but <laughs> GitLab CI should be pretty decent to do, I think. Thank you. Oh, one last comment, maybe. Um, I showed you, this is like a wiki for the community Ashi Vault collection for example and there it has links to different docs you can go to the latest devil uh, the latest doc site you can go to the devil doc site and you can go to the doc site for the latest commit in this collection so you can really decide what you want to see <laughs>